Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome to episode five. Let's go through an overview of where we are in PCC2. We've reviewed part one, scope organization repair, part two, welded repairs, where there were 16 articles, uh, part three, we just finished, which is mechanical repairs, 13 articles, and part four, non-metallic bonded repairs, where there were three articles. And the last section is pressure and tightness of piping and equipment. We are going to jump into part four. I've got grouped articles 401 and 402 together uh, because they are so closely related. Now, uh, one is for high risk design applications and one is for low risk applications. And you're, and you're thinking, okay, uh, what's the difference? Well, basically, in a nutshell, um, high risk designs have more engineering, more calculations, and they have more testing. Low risk, less testing. So I'm going to give you a broad table here, just sort of as a guide. You have to actually read the nuances of the spec. But, but basically, uh, if your low risk is if you're less than 150 pounds and less than 120 Fahrenheit, but greater than zero Fahrenheit, and there's some little caveats to the defect size, then you're classified as low risk. So repair of fluid system components, uh, this is its scope basically, and it involves piping, pipelines, tanks, and vessels. And uh, basically if the development, this is about the development of, of procedures, okay? So there's an organized methodical way of developing procedures for repair. And um, these repairs can be structural and or uh, pressure related or leakage and and all these procedures are also based on on risks i'm going to show you something here if you look over here this is a, an example of a support where the supports are worn out um, and the um, the maintenance engineer has chosen to put a fabric uh, reinforcement here you can see the outline and and this is where a, a good a really good application because there's a lot of loads at this location because it's supporting the pipe and um, you'd expect this to, to experiencing thinning so this is a great application of um, of a non-metallic bonded repair and uh, the last section has to do with qualification and, and inspection and testing, of course. Well, let's continue on with high risk applications and low risk applications together. So a repair system is has some fundamental is def definitions or some fundamental key variables that need to be considered. Uh, the substrate has a substrate which is a repair surface. The, there, there needs to be considered surface preparation. There needs to be considered the low tra load transfer material such as the filler material. There needs to be considered the composite material, re repair laminate, the application method, sealing and coating, the curing protocol, and the interlaminar adhesives. So this is where you would apply plies. And those are the essential elements. And, and 
they don't necessarily have the procedure doesn't necessarily have to have all of these elements they can have some of them but uh they they're, they're basically this is sort of the, the the maximum variables that you need to consider in developing a procedure now let's get into details about the mandatory parts of 401 this is the high risk application one so how they've how ASME set it up is they have a series of appendices one to like eight or so and uh, this is sort of the the, the process that that's uh, required if you're going to follow PCC2 basically you start off with a design sheet and it's it's all laid out for you you answer all these variables and points and then there's a qualification uh, data for the repair system to go back to the data sheet this is where you start loading up the calculations and all the information you have a short-term pipe spool survival test and you have a measurement of the gamma for the leaking defect calculation and then you hear the measurements of the performance data and measurement of the impact performance installer qualification so it looks kind of like a welding procedure doesn't it? you've got qualifications and procedures to develop installation the second part which is the low risk application has its own appendices and you're going to see how much less uh paperwork so to say say is involved because you know the risks are lower uh, once again you have a repair data sheet you have the qualification data for the repair system so you still have to do some qualification validation for the repair of the complete leaking component and then the installer qualification and then finally the installation so you can see there's differences and it's less work article 4.3 non-metallic internal lining and piping sprayed form for buried pipe so this is where we're doing the spraying of the internal pipe there are other types of systems where you put a liner in the pipe and they, that may be a, be a topic for future videos if if uh, someone is interested in that just send me an email we're gonna we're gonna stick with article 403 for this video uh, so these these spray forms they have they're they're only deal, dealt with thermoset polymers okay and there the lining can be protective or it can be structural so um, you know protective is your 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 you're protecting a surface and the other one is structural of course that's where you're trying to keep the the whole thing from collapsing and this particular article has to do with below ground which is inferred to be buried pipe but there are exceptions and for uh, and all everything is sprayed okay it's not painted on sprayed and it can be uh, what's nice about it it's very flexible you can put it on steel cast iron concrete just about everything and uh, you can put it on it could be applied to with or without liner so if you have like a cement liner paint you can just apparently the guy's just saying you can just go right over top and uh, this all this technology is termed cured in place pipe CIPP so you'll see that terminology used So applications. So when we are greater than 24 inches, it's relatively easy to apply. Uh, ASME says, "Oh, you can't do it under that under 24 inches." But I, you know, I I, it, I agree though. It is considerably harder if it's less than that for spraying. Um, can be applied locally, so that's an advantage. Is that you can apply this. You know in small locations and uh, get back up online quicker 
you can um, you could add reinforcement to this. So so I've given some example like fiber cloth impregnated carbon, and that would provide additional reinforcement. The next slide has to do with design considerations for 403. Application temperatures. So we have a minimum and maximum temperature that has to be considered uh, when you're applying this, this uh, coating. It can't be too cold or too hot and the manufacturer will provide you with some guidance. Operating temperatures, there's a minimum and maximum temperature and there's humidity that has to be considered and system exposure like do you have acids and solvents in water um, like what what are your your severe uh, maybe you have uh, a lot of chlorides and uh, these are considerations uh, surface cleanliness uh, like all coatings like paint and so on um, you know, NICE will always teach you that you have to remove all that debris and get your and, and remove all the loose particulate and get your. And then the second part is you have to have the right kind of profile. You have to have enough roughness for the spray to uh, adhere. And of course, there's the curing issues that have to be considered at the, the amount of time before you put the unit back into service. The next, uh, continuing on with design considerations, the design load is interesting. ASME has categorized them into three types of loads, A, B, and C. So one from the least to the most. One is more for leakage, and then you get more and more severe. Then the time you get to C, you've got structural. And all this is found in Appendix 403I, very, very detailed procedures. It looks a lot like ASME um, B31 in the, in the way and the philosophy of how it's done. So there's procedures for pressure and its own set of calculations, soil loads, uh, thermal expansion, surface, uh, uh, optional, water hammer, seismic, and abrasion. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.